My name is Lauren Webber and this is my Beatles project. Yesterday All my troubles seem so far away Now it looks as though they're here to stay Oh, I believe in yesterday The Beatles were undeniably one of the most iconic and influential rock or pop band of all time, with 17 number one singles and 15 number one albums, they are one of the most successful ever bands to come out of England. They were responsible for shaking up the music world and would become one of the most famous pop groups of all time. These were the Beatles and today many of their songs are still enjoyed on radio stations over 40 years after their breakup. The members of the group were John Winston Lennon from Liverpool, who played rhythm guitar, harmonica, and also sang. Born 9th of October, 1940, murdered, New York, 8th of December, 1980. James Paul McCartney from Liverpool, who played bass and sang. Born 18th of June 1942, and he is still alive today. George Harrison from Liverpool, who played lead guitar and sang, born on 25th of February 1943, and died in California on the 29th of November 2001. Ringo Starr from Dingle, who played drums, born on the 7th of July 1940, and is still alive today. However, there was also Stuart Sackcliffe from Scotland, who played bass, born on the 23rd of June 1940, who was the original drummer, but when he died from a brain hemorrhage in Hamburg, West Germany, on the 10th of April 1962, where they were touring at the age of 21, he was replaced by Pete Best from Liverpool. Born 24th of November. However, Pete was not up to the Beatles standard and was kicked out of the group to be replaced by Ringo Starr. The group's roots extended back to Liverpool in the late 1950s by the teenagers John Lennon and Paul McCartney had a chance to meet him. Lennon was performing with his group, the Quarrymen, and McCartney was brought by a friend to hear them. The first ever concert in England was at the Clash Coffee Club, Liverpool, on the 17th of December 1960. But the Cabin Club, Liverpool, is best remembered as the place they played their early gigs. It is now internationally famous and people come from all over the world to visit. it. Luckily, a businessman called Brian Epstein was in the audience and thought they were great. He became their manager immediately giving them a new image of suits and long thin ties. They worked very well together and he helped them so much. In fact, they would, they would have probably not have become famous without his help. He was known as the fifth Beatle. The group's first single, Love Me Do, made it to the chart. In 1963, Tease Tease Me was a new hit and they were on the road to being famous. More songs were topping the charts including From Me To You, She Loves You Yeah 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 and I Want To Hold Your Hand. By this time it was official that Beatle Mania had taken the country by Oh. Tell you something, I think you'll understand when I say that something. I want to hold your hand. January 1964, New York disc jockeys began playing the Beatles, I Want to Hold Your Hand, virtually non stop. 
The record went to number one in the music charts in early February, and the fascination developed for this new British sound with its raw energy and wild electric guitars. The next month, on February the seventh, nineteen sixty-four, a plane carrying the Beatles arrived at New York Airport. More than three thousand screaming fans were there to greet them. They were known as the British Invasion. Reporters had difficulty telling one Beatle from another. Newspapers thought it was a funny story. The screaming girls, the foreign lads with the insect-like root name, and the long hair. Forty-eight hours later, seventy-three million television viewers turned into Sunday night Ed Sullivan show to watch the Beatles perform live. The next day, there was hardly a teenager in the country who did not want to go out and buy a guitar. In February 1964, over 60% of all records sold in America were Beatles. It's been a hard day's night, and I've been working like a dog. A Hard Day's Night, 1964, was the first Beatles album. In fact, the first rock album by anyone to be made up completely of original music. The group took an unusual interest in the sound of its music and wanted to constantly come up with new ideas. For example, an Indian sitar was used in Norwegian wood and Eleanor Rigby was accompanied by a string octet with no Beatles playing whatsoever. While well, Gotta Get You Into My Life featured a brass band. As the Beatles music became more complicated, it made live concerts more difficult to reproduce. So along with all the screaming fans and general chaos that accompanied Beatlemania, the group gave up touring in 1966. This gave them time to work on that amazing but groundbreaking album, Sgt. Pepper's The Only Heart for Band. The Beatles enjoyed great success and starred in several movies, including A Hard Day's Night, Help, and Yellow Sunbreeze. They continued to release top selling albums and songs. The music was excellent. The words that met to many of the band's tunes are as meaningful as today as they were then, and they seem to sum up the feelings of an entire generation. Brian Epstein's death in 1967 was a disaster that the group would never be able to recover from. Business problems that Epstein had always taken care of were now left with a forced fire shelter. Their record company, Apple Records, was not being looked after, and so was losing a lot of money. And Lennon refused to be anywhere without his future wife, Yoko Ono. Yoko met John in 1966. They married in 1969. Six years later, Yoko had a son, Sean. The low point came in early 1969. The band came back together that summer to record Abbey Road which turned out to be the last time the group would work together. John Lennon had told the other members that he was thinking of leaving, but had hoped that they would continue without him. But McCartney wanted to move on completely. Lennon was furious, as were Harrison and Starr, that the album was released a few weeks before the Beatles, Let It Be, 1970, was due out. A bitter legal battle began, which lasted nearly a decade beyond Lennon's 1980 murder outside of his New York apartment. The six-year period where the Beatles were at the peak of their powers was one of those rare, brief and wonderful moments when popular culture and high art murdered one. Their ultimate influence can be seen in the fact that no later band has even remotely Captured the public imagination of the beauty of this.